Michelle Sai here and husband. So this video is the unboxing of the Shark HD5 that husband recently got. First he wanted to make a place for it so he welded up a table. I used the grinder to clean the metal, then he welded a top section and a bottom section, added some legs to one of them, and then welded it all together. We used some clamps to help straighten it up. Then he welded on some locking casters. Then cut down a piece of plywood for the top. Level. And made sure all was good. and added some more plywood to the bottom. And it was ready for the shark. Here it is in the back of the pickup, ready to be unloaded. I missed husband bringing in this box, but watched him and the neighbor Tom unload the rest. Well, this is the fourth axis thing. Okay. Cool. Oh, you got that? This is definitely not a one person job, especially okay. around the gantry. It definitely takes two people. I want to put a special shout out to my neighbor and friend, Tom. Thank you so very much for all the help. Then they spent a few hours putting it together. I was working on reorganizing my corner, but I helped out every once in a while. I'm not sure how easy it was or frustrating, so I will let husband talk about that. So putting the gantry together, there wasn't any specifics around which holes we were to use. So the first time we put it together, we used the wrong holes that are on the gantry. Um, figured that out pretty quickly and then adjusted it. Other than that, it, the whole Shark HD5 went together pretty easy. Some of the instructions were not real clear, especially around the power cables. We broke a couple of the tabs on the cable cover because there's no instruction on really how to open up the cable tray. The water lines in the power cable to the spindle do not have any way of attaching to the unit, so we had to use zip ties. Tom had to go, but he wanted to come back when husband was firing it up to start carving for the first time. Okay, so now I need to put these clamps on. Um, one thing we found out is they did not supply the bolts for it, even though they said they did. So I had to go buy some 1024 4 inch long bolts to do this. No big deal, but just kind of disappointing. So an update to this, even though I didn't get the bolts, I did get a different attachment um, in the mail from New Wave Automation without any notice also, so uh, and no instructions either, so I haven't put the new attachment on yet. Okay, moment of truth, turn on power. I can hear the spindle working in the pump for the water-cooled spindle. On the back of the control box, there's a power switch. I'm going to turn that on. It is on. That's because I got to turn that on. Now it's green. The next wave automation pendant comes up. Hit continue. Okay, it's asking for an access code, which I don't know what it is. Okay, 
I'm going to have to figure out what this access control is because there's nothing in the book that says anything about it. Okay, finally figured out how to get the access, access code for the pendant. Um, just as a caution, if you try to do it in Chrome, it will not give you the access code. You got to go it in either IE or Microsoft Edge. So, we turn the power on to the system. Pendant came up. Next wave automation, hit continue. Ask for the access code. And guess what? It's working. Okay. So I'm going to move the fourth axis here. Do you have to put the access code in every time? I don't hope not. Hope it's a one time thing. Yeah. Okay. So right and left works on the x-axis, but x is across, y. Since I've been using the unit for a couple of weeks, I've discovered that the water lines and the cables hang down and get caught on clamps. So I've rigged up the lines along the gantry to keep them up off the table. Okay, there's the bottom. So I'm probably going to have to push that spindle down in there a little further. And that's okay. Right now, everything's working. Yay! Now I got to do is figure out the program and cut something. <laughs> so with that, hey, guess what? Put it up on a nice table. Made a little box down here for the control unit. Need to clean up some cables and stuff so it's a little better organized. But hey. Pretty happy. He has water buckets for the water-cooled spindle and all the hoses involved with that. And he made a little cubby here for the control box. And it looks pretty nice all together on this table. Great job, husband. So this is the key. I've got to put something connect this. Husband got the first project all planned out and he started the machine rolling. Tom was back to watch, and the thing kept carving and carving and carving. And after about three hours, husband saw that it wasn't even halfway through the project, so he stopped it to make a smaller one. Okay, I'm going to set the tool height. I have the controller to be able to move my uh, axis, different axis around. So I need to come left, and I can pick fast, medium, or slow. get close, I put it down with slow. The wine you hear on the spindle is not normal, so I called New Wave Automation Tech Services and they decided to send me a brand new spindle. And now it is really quiet. Okay, it's touching right on the corner. I go to my zero X, Y, Z axis. That then zeroes it. I can bring everything up now. It's ready to go. I then go to my USB. I pick my program, which is my grandkids 24 by 8, B bit 90, hit next, and start. This is carving a grandkids sign to hang above our grandkids' pictures in the house. It took about 20 minutes to carve. And this is what it looked like when the shark was done with it. And I painted it, and I sanded it, and here it is, all finished. It says grandkids, and the bottom says old people are proud of their grandchildren. And that's from Proverbs 17.6. So thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.